giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First Updates Now is able to create content thanks to viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Welcome to the Inspire NC CAD Challenge Green Generation broadcast on First Updates Now. From Inspire NC, I'm Kevin, and our producer is the editor-in-chief of First Updates Now, Tyler Olds. Our CAD Challenge is bigger than ever with over 100 participants competing and 13 FTC robots that will be judged on today's stream. With seven days to create robots in CAD to face the unique game challenge, Green Generation, some submissions will leave you in awe, while others may not shine as bright. What's important is that all the teams are improving their CAD skills to prepare them for the next season of competition. Before we get started, just a brief introduction of who we are. Inspire NC is a student-run nonprofit organization from Cary, North Carolina. And our goal is to promote STEAM education to the community. We also run our own FIRST teams, FRC 6908 Infused and FTC 16967 Insight. Back in March, at the start of the COVID-19 quarantine, we decided that we wanted a way to get students working together and building their skills even when stuck inside. So with the help of members from FRC 6908 Infuse and FRC 900 Zebracorns, we ran our first CAD challenge with a handful of teams in North Carolina. This time around, we decided to make it a bit bigger. So we reached out to as much of the FIRST community as we could. And on that note, I'd like to give a quick shout out to our sponsors and supporters who made this event possible. We have Andy Mark, who provided us with prizes for this event, Dassault Systems, who graciously provided 100 SolidWorks licenses for our teams to use, First North Carolina for helping us promote this event, First Updates Now for hosting this stream today, as well as FRC 900, the Zebracorns, and FRC 6908 Infused for helping us run this entire event. Now with that, let's quickly introduce our game, Green Generation. This game has two main game pieces, pollutants, which are your standard tennis balls, and scrubbers, which are green compliant wheels. Pollutants are to be scored by teams into the central landfill area, while scrubbers are to be scored on filter pegs on the side of the field. Before we get to the robots, let's introduce our judges. With us today, we have Akshat from FRC Team 900 and FTC Team 16967, and myself from 6908 and 16967. Thank you to Nick from FRC Team 2220 and FTC Team 9205 for also helping us out with the judging. So let's break down what the CAD challenge is and how the judging process will take place. To start, the CAD challenge is open to anyone who wants to hone in on their CAD skills. Teams had one week to design a robot to play our custom design game, Green Generation, along with submitting supporting document for their designs. Teams' robots were judged based on a standardized rubric in strategic design, innovative design, aesthetics, CAD quality, and feasibility. As for how the show will be laid out, we will be counting down from 13 to 1 with each robot shown on the screen and receiving critique from one judge. Before starting the judging, we would like to give our first giveaway. We will be giving away an Andy Mark GOAT. Special thank you to Andy Mark for the prizes. This giveaway will be, will be drawn right before we get into our top 10. Here's Tyler to explain the terms of this giveaway. Yeah, just like any of our giveaways, sorry about that. Uh, giveaways here in chat. All you got to do is type in the keyword, and guess what? Green Generation is the keyword. Type that in the chat right now, and that's your opportunity to win an Animark Goat. Uh, they also should be sending you a coupon, and suppliers are starting to get back into things, uh, so we should be getting these out pretty quickly now, and we thank Animark for that. So once again, Green Generation in chat. If you're a subscriber, you will get five times luck to win. And don't forget, you can subscribe for free through Twitch Prime. Good luck, everybody. All right, let's start, with off, let's start off with our first robot, Team 1337, Dusty, and their robot, Rusty Dusty. Rusty Dusty is a fast dumping pollutant robot, and they have a large hopper right in the center of the robot, which they can both slide linearly, like horizontally, and vertically, all right? And they have a cam drive on the robot, which will allow them to maneuver around the field really easily. And lastly, they can also carry the maximum number of balls to see from their opponents, 
in green generation, we didn't actually put a limit on how many balls you can carry. Therefore, Dusty can hold as many balls as it can and stealing balls from opponents. So on to the next robot. So the next robot is from team 14779 and team Spontaneous Construction and their robot, Jar Jar Bot. Jar Jar Bot is a priority pollutant scorer. At the top of the robot, they have a three-way sorter that is powered by a color sensor right at the front. Then they also have a wire tennis, tennis ball intake right at the bottom right. And that will, just like how real tennis ball collectors work, that will pick up tennis balls and deposit them into the sorter. Lastly, they also have an effective stack mechanism on the left side of the robot with that pipe right there. There, they will stack their alliance colored balls and then using a servo, they can release them to create stacks in the columns. Next up, we have team 9656 Lactose Free with their robot, TVD. This robot focuses primarily on scrubbers, which are the green compliant wheels. So to do this, this robot uh, implements a ground-based wheeled intake, which is effective. And it reminded me a little bit of 2019 FRC robots. Um, so we also know that they put forth a competitive strategy by looking at prior games for advice. This design is very fast and effective and their chassis allows for great mobility. And another thing that stood out with this robot is how beautiful their aesthetics are. In their renders, the robot looks absolutely astounding. So good work to this team. Next up, we have team 1115 CAD site in 10th place with their robot, Toxic Pickup Truck. This bot is a simple bot that just gets the job done. They have a passive scrubber system on the side of their robot, which ensures that they don't have to worry when they're going to score on the filter. This robot also has a wheeled intake on linear rails. What this allows them to do is make sure that they're able to intake pollutants wherever they want to. Finally, this team boasts a color sensor for accurate scrubber placement. They stated in their submission that when they are lining up with the filter, if there's already a scrubber that has been placed on the filter, they can use their color sensor to avoid rescoring, making uh, showing us that they put good thought into their design. Next up, we have Team 3107, the Park of Puff Girls, and their robot, Buttercup. Buttercup is a priority pollutant scorer with an intake designed just for pollutants and an outtake also just for pollutants. The highlights of this robot are their extending intake and outtake, which will allow them to reach into the loading zone and minimize travel time between the loading zone and the landfill. Also, their outtake has a funnel design, which allows them to easily create stacks by just letting them drop through. And lastly, their robot is really detailed. Pretty much every single screw is in there, and it's also really aesthetically pleasing to look at. Next up, we have Team 1234 Techno Logic with their robot, The Hammer. Now, while their team name might suggest that they had no logic, it was clearly evident that they used thought process and logic in designing this robot. This robot is a wicked looking bot with its green on black highlights. This robot also boasts a passive scrubber mech, much like many of our other submissions. What's interesting about this is they decided to use a little panel for each of the levels that correspond with the filter, which means they don't have to worry too much about lining their robot up, which will save them on time. Also, this robot has a very strong, robust frame with the double walls around their mechanism drive. This allows them to have good mobility around the field, as well as be able to take hits from other robots on the field. Finally, this robot features an arm in the front for picking up pollutants. This lets them take a lot of control over pollutants on the field. However, there is one drawback to their arm in that it's a low volume pollutant mechanism, which means they won't be as fast with scoring pollutants as some of the other robots we'll see. But overall, this was a great submission from Team 1234. Next up, we have Team 2020, just like this year, Chess Penguins and their robot, King Penguin. King Penguin is a really fast pollutant cycler with scrubber capabilities. So in their robot, they also have a sorter similar to how we've seen in Team before, where they use a color sensor to differentiate between the different types of pollutants, red, green, and blue, as well as the purifier, which is yellow. 
right? So they use a color sensor in order to sort between them and sort them into different sections of their outtake. And then after that, they also have a very passive yet effective scrubber mechanism, similar to FTC team 1115. They have six pegs that are perfectly arranged in order to just drive up to the filter and place the scrubbers on there. Lastly, they have a really nice black and white aesthetic, which is really pleasing to look at. And they have pretty great detail in the robot as well. All right, next up, we have team 9681 Parallel Lions with their robot Ecofan. This submission was very interesting and it was an innovative approach to this challenge that we didn't see many other submissions take. This bot uses a dozer style high volume intake to scoop up all the pollutants that are around the field. Also, this robot interestingly features a conveyor lift for the pollutants that they intake. So they feature a belt that feeds from their intake up into their scoring mechanism, which was a very interesting take to this challenge that I haven't seen before. The one downside of this conveyor belt is that it's a high penalty point of failure. If something were to go wrong with their conveyor belt, this robot would essentially be out of the game. But back to the CAD, their CAD was very thorough. And as you can see in this picture in the render, they've modeled their wires and electrical board thoroughly, which is a welcome surprise in a CAD challenge. Also, their high volume intake guarantees that they're in possession of pollutants, allowing them to gain an advantage on the field. Overall, this was a very unique submission and we thoroughly enjoyed it. Good job to Team 9681. Before we get into the top five, it's now time for... Okay, okay. now we're gonna take a little break and bring on our producer, Tyler, to announce the winner of the first giveaway. Sure, so once again, uh, it's the Animark GOAT, uh, is what you're eligible to win. Uh, if I'm correct, and I'm not 100% correct, and then pass, Anymark has also sent out like a special coupon as well too, so you might be getting that. So let's go ahead and roll for that. Don't forget, you do need to be following the channel in order to be eligible. We will re-roll if you are not following. Uh, with that said, our winner is going to be Milo Bial. Congratulations. Please shoot First Updates Now a message in uh, uh, Discord or in Twitch here uh, with your mailing information so we can get that out to you. Congrats, and we have more giveaways to do course later on during the stream as well. Thanks Andy Mark for this awesome giveaway. All right, before we get into the top five, it's now time for us to announce the award, the winner of our special prize. As a thank you to Andy Mark for graciously providing us with the prizes for this event, we'll be awarding the Andy Mark Award. This award is given to the team with the most Andy Mark products in their robot. The winner of this award will win a two inch green compliant wheel, also known as a scrubber in our game, Green Generation, for each member of their team. This team utilizes seven Andymark Never Rest motors, integrates them into an elegant and efficient design to take home the prize. Congrats to Team 2020, the Chess Penguins. Before starting the top five, we would also like to start our second giveaway. We'll be giving away another Andymark GOAT. Again, a special thanks to Andymark for the prizes. This giveaway will be drawn right after we announce our winner. Here's Tyler to explain the terms of the giveaway. Yeah, once again, go ahead and uh, get ready to type in CAD, C-A-D. That's what you need to type in the chat, and that's how you are eligible to win uh, the Andy Mark Coat. Don't forget, you need to be following the channel and our subs. Do get 5x luck. We would appreciate it if you help support our streams. We can keep making great content and helping support things like this Inspire NC. So good luck, everybody. All right. Now to proceed on to the top five. So the first team in their top five is Team 254, Spark Squad Uno and their robot, Lightspeed. Lightspeed is a pollutant hoarder and scrubber score. That's the best way to describe it. What they do during the match is that they'll pick up all the pollutants on the field from the loading zone and then keep them away from their opponents while also giving it to their other team alliance members. On the back of their robot, they also have a scrubber mechanism. This utilizes two acrylic plates to push scrubbers off their robot and onto the filter in a perfectly aligned manner. Lastly, they also have a really fast and robust swerve drive system. So they can go around the field really easily, really fast, and guard defense as well as they're stealing all the balls during the match. And then the next slide also shows both of their renders. So the first one on the left shows their scrubber mechanism with the two acrylic plates I mentioned before. So the yellow one, and then there's a white one right behind that. The yellow one is actuated by a linear actuator pushing the filters off. And on the right, we have a side view of the robot. 
which is very aesthetically pleasing. This polycarb looks really nice. And there's a good combination of colors on this robot as well. All right. In fourth place, we have team 14828, the Crypto Cardinals, with their robot, Barracuda. This robot is a fast pollutant scorer with a scrubber capability. So some highlights of this robot are its linear slides, which enable for a large range of motion with their mechanisms on their robot, which also helps them get faster cycle times as well. Another thing that was a really large highlight of this robot was they stressed a modular design. Their pollutant intake system is able to expand out of frame perimeter so that they can maximize the number of pollutants that they're holding at any given time. What this enables them to do is score pollutants fast and gain ownership really quickly. So there were some issues with this robot, however, um, in terms of there were a couple of CAD uh, quality issues with collisions. But overall, this robot was obviously intended with maximizing space and maximizing cycle times in mind. Also, most importantly, this robot has Elon Musk's approval. That way, it's a win in our book. All right, our third team is team 1520, no, and their robot, Robert the Rover. Their robot is a very do-everything robot. It does everything on the field. With their scrubber intake on the very front, with their noodle intake, and that feeds into a sorter in the back of their robot. The sorter uses a color sensor like we've seen before, but it's a pretty innovative servo design, which allows them to tilt a ramp, allowing them to put it into different parts of their outtake, which we'll see with the next slide. They also have a scrubber elevator, as seen on the right, and that allows them to accurately position the scrubber and put them on the filter. On the left is a, is a perfect example of their outtake. On the top, they have a green pollutant bin, and on the bottom, they have for their alliance colored balls. Therefore, they can output both at once and be really efficient using linear slides so they reduce their cycle time as well. And with that, that brings us to our second place team. Team 1469, Circular Dependency Detected with their robot, VLOOKUP. VLOOKUP is an efficient pollutant scorer with their name coming off of Google Sheets' very famed VLOOKUP function. This robot uses a shooter for scoring pollutants, which is something that was quite unique out of all the submissions. With their robot, there's a large amount of space for storage with their large vertical intake for pollutants that use wheels to pull up the balls, which allows for constant contact and making sure that they don't lose any pollutants they come into contact with. This robot also boasts a strong and light metal frame construction, which makes sure that they're able to take hits but are also light and quick around the field. Finally, this team said that they implemented a color sensor in their shooter, which enables them to accurately shoot their pollutants that they have picked up into the uh, scoring zone based on the color. Because in green generation, there were three colors of pollutants that you could pick up, and each one earned you a different point. So this team definitely took into account the different strategic plays that they would need to make during the game. However, the one feedback that I have to provide in terms of their shooter is the fact that when moving between different speeds for their flywheel, which is what they said their color sensor would address, they've, uh, it may impact your cycle time, which could end up slowing you down on the field itself. But otherwise, this robot has great potential to even go to champs, in my opinion. So great job from Team 1469 with their robot VLOOKUP. Now, before we get on to the winner of the Green Generation FTC Challenge, where every member of the winning team is going to receive an Andy Mark GOAT for their achievement. So we'd like to thank Andy Mark for giving this prize. But before we get there, we're going to bring on our producer, Tyler, to announce the winner of our second giveaway. Yeah, once again, CAD was the uh, keyword that you had to type in in order to win that to get the Andy Mark GOAT. It's just that easy, guys. Type in CAD. And with that said, the winner is going to be Poofy Jacket 254. Congratulations, Poofy, uh, in that. And I'm sure I probably have your information uh, as you've won a million times, but congrats for winning once again. Lots of rigged emotes in chat, please. We clearly rigged it for Poofy Jacket to win. Can confirm. We rigged this. So now it's time for our first place winner of the Green Generation CAD Challenge. And coming in first place is Team 
7118 High Concept Miscellaneous Interactions. For winning this, they will be winning a Andy Mark Goat. So Team 7118 provided their robot, Langeskov. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. This robot is the ultimate robot to play Green Generation. It's a fast and efficient do-everything bot that accomplishes all the tasks you need to be successful in Green Generation. It's a very solid bot, has a great design, and has very appealing aesthetics with a white and blue color scheme. And here at Inspire C, as you can tell with our slideshow, we really like white and blue. Their submission was very thorough and informative, and their CAD was highly detailed. Their provided match strategy showed that they really took into account the different things that went on in Green Generation. With their chassis, they followed the FTC standard of a Mechanum drivetrain, which is a solid choice for maneuverability, but also their robot construction is lightweight, which allows them to move across the field quickly. One really nice thing about this robot were their vectoring wheels for the intake. This made sure that regardless of where the pollutants were on the field, they'd be able to gather them in and bring them into their possession on the robot, which can make a huge difference when you're playing against competitive teams. Also, their flex wheels help put more compression on the pollutants on the field, making sure that they aren't losing any of their pollutants. Their intake feeds into a nice hopper, which has a nice huge volume, which means that they can hold a lot more pollutants than a lot of the other robots fielded, which gives them a decisive advantage. And finally, their lift and scoring mechanism was integrated with autonomous capabilities, which means they were able to correctly score the proper balls at any given time. Overall, this robot was very, very well catted and was very well suited to play the game, Green Generation. So once again, congratulations to Team 7118 for winning the Inspire NC CAD Challenge, Green Generation. And thank you to everyone who's watched. This was another massive turnout, and we can't wait to be back in the winter for another one. Thank you to all of our judges for your time and dedication. And don't forget that if you want more FIRST Robotics in your life, make sure you hit that follow or subscribe button to FIRST Updates Now on both Twitch and YouTube. On behalf of myself and the Inspire NC CAD Challenge Game Design Committee, I'd like to thank all the teams for their amazing CAD Challenge creations, and to everyone who's viewed or supported the CAD Challenge. For the teams who submitted their robots, we will be sending in-depth feedback from our judges um, in the coming days. Thanks to First Updates Now and our producer Tyler for their support and promotion of the stream. We'll see you this winter with another CAD Challenge, and right here with more content from First Updates Now. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and Tier 2 Plus subscribers on Twitch, keeping fun loud, live, and independent.